Andrew Urquhart with you on the programme today. The um, Death with Dignity Act uh, is up for review. Well, at least that was part of the act. It was always part of the act. That um, after several years, that the how things are going with the euthanasia legislation would be reviewed. That is um, happening at the moment. But what are the findings and what, if anything, is likely to be uh, changes made as a result of the review? Joining me on the program now from the Maxim Institute, Marianne Spurtle. Marianne, kia ora, good morning. Hi, Andrew. There's some concerns. I mean, let's just let's just jump straight in there. There are definitely some concerns about how things are going with the implementation of the euthanasia legislation and the uh, the structure, the checks and balances that we were promised when the legislation was put in place, the checks and, and balances that were promised before we voted in the referenda don't seem to have amounted to much. Yeah, there was an article in the Herald um, about a week and a half ago. Two of the, the three people who were on the review committee are no longer on the committee, and they're, they're saying that the information that they had to review wasn't sufficient to let them know if people were dying unjustly. So the review committee was saying, we don't actually have the information we need to review it. Wow. And the article laid out exactly what the gaps were and how their concerns were responded to, which is basically one of them after having concerns, her contract wasn't renewed. So that's how that went. And then the other one decided not to apply for another two year term because she saw things that she said went against best practice. So that's a bad sign when your review committee is saying we, we don't think this is going well. These are the people to make sure that things don't go horrifically wrong. Things are yeah. going so well that they're either sacked or they're resigning. Are they being replaced? Are new people being brought in? Bought in? Perhaps uh, people that are, I don't know, more compliant? <laughs> I don't know who the replacements are. Um, there has been a backlog. People have continued to um, be euthanized. No, we have we have two things that are legal. One is assisted suicide, where you get drugs prescribed to you that yeah. will kill you. Mm -hmm. The other is by a medical practitioner, and that's voluntary euthanasia. And so we're one of, I think, only 10 countries that allow both of those things to happen. Yeah. So that that is what we have legalized. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> I, I was just saying uh, w whether or not these people have been replaced. It seems like the the wheels have fallen off the, the, side of it. the yeah. review process. So th the idea with legalizing medical practitioners to euthanize people is you, you need every single death to be reviewed yep. to, to make sure that everything has been um, done by the book because this – legalizes killing other people. Yeah. Um, for seven months, that panel wasn't reviewing the deaths. Wow. So they've got a backlog. Um, now, apparently, the committee, um, just in time for the review that's due out in November, the committee now has three members on it again, okay. yep. and they're working through the backlog. Um, but e even the ones that preceded it, the, the previous committee weren't able to actually sign off and say that they knew for sure that nothing had been um, and toward. These people died, well, people died either by their own hand or um, with the help of a medical professional without any oversight, without anybody checking that this was done properly. It was being checked. Um, now, the vast majority, um, well over 90%, were a uh, medical practitioner, mm -hmm. not um, assisted suicide. They were checked. The, the problem was, and some of it appears to be an IT fault, where lines that had nil in it just were left blank. And so they'd go back and say, um, wh where is this information? Yeah. The Ministry of Health literally told them that if there was no information to assume everything was okay. Wow. One of them, Dr. Gravel, actually took her concerns to doctors who were involved, went back to them for more information which sounds like her doing her job because she is part of the oversight committee. Yeah. And the information she got firsthand from doctors who'd been involved, there were inconsistencies with what the paperwork said, which understandably made her more alarmed because mm -hmm. now you, you don't trust the paperwork that you're receiving, which already has gaps in it. No, very, very concerning indeed. Uh, and, and that a response of saying, if you don't get any information... Just presume that everything's okay. I mean, 
what if we applied this to to any other aspect of life, let alone something as serious as a procedure that ends somebody's life? Yeah. I mean, in medical care, you don't go, oh, look, if we don't know, just assume everything's yeah. fine, even though there's indications. I'm not going to bother taking your blood pressure. We'll just presume it's all good. Shall we? That's probably okay. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and one of the things that they found, and I, of the, the many um, that they looked at, one person didn't speak English and there was no interpreter at their consultation. So right there you're going, well, how, how was that person approved? Yeah. And there, there was also an indication that they probably had dementia. So like those are those are actual red flags for people who might have assumed that not nah, everything should be all right. The legislation is tight enough. Yeah. Um, apparently not. One of the the concerns I know when um, the end of life choice um, bill was being debated, and of course the referenda that followed, is whether or not there was going to be coercion, whether or not there was going to be. Uh, undue influence from uh, from family members and whether or not people were going to be in a sound mind when they made that decision. This is part of the reason the checks and balances were in there. If this system isn't as robust as it should be, then it's, it's possible that uh, there was coercion. It's possible that people were being unduly influenced in their decisions. Yeah, and this is where you can look at what we don't know two different ways. You can say, well, we don't know, so it's probably okay. Or you can say, we don't know and we should. Yeah. So you've got Todd Stevenson, um, Act Party, who is introducing a member's bill that would remove the requirement that you have a, a six-month prognosis. Yeah. So you have to be terminally ill and have a six-month or less prognosis. Currently, his member's bill, if it gets selected and if it goes through, would remove that. So there there would still be requirements you'd have to meet, mm-hmm. but your death would have to be imminent and you would still um, qualify. Just a minute, you had is, him on Q&A, yep. Yeah. This is being proposed even before we've had the review process. Yeah. So uh, r- rather than say, hey, let's see how it's going first before we decide whether it needs tightening up or loosening, uh, we're just going to charge ahead presuming that everything's all good again, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, David Seymour has said from the beginning, and he can't introduce private members' bills, which is why on this subject, which is why um, Todd has. He said from the beginning that the only reason some of the restrictions are in there was to get the legislation over the line. He he was never happy with having the six month. Um, There are other things in there like doctors are not allowed technically. I, I know from what I've heard that people are, doctors are, but technically they're not allowed to tell someone, have you thought of euthanasia? They have to um, only respond to requests because you don't want to plant that idea in people's yeah, heads. Yeah. There are things like that that are in there that David Seymour is not happy with. And I, I don't think it makes any difference what next month's review says. He already knows what he wants the legislation to look like. Yeah. So, yeah, Todd Stevenson on Q&A, he said, well, we can't always know for sure that there was no coercion. And he was saying that in the sense of, well, there, there's no way to be sure. So why try harder wow. instead of going, this is a problem. We can't know for sure. And it doesn't seem like, based on the review committee's experience, there is evidence that there has been um, e- even an even an attempt in some cases to ensure there hasn't been coercion. It's just been an assume everything's okay attitude. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the review process about to happen, it seems that, uh, well, some MPs at least are are just going ahead and and loosening the regulations regardless of what happens with the review process. Given that uh, the committee have, um, well, those that have the concerns have been sacked or have, have left under their own regard, um, how optimistic are you, Marianne, that there will be a robust review process? And even if there is, optimistically, that their findings will be um, taken notice of? Yeah, the, the process um, it's, it's two pronged. You've got a review by the Ministry of, of Health, and yep. I don't know who's doing it. I, I cannot predict what that's going to say. Um, based on the way it's been run so far, I don't have high hopes. And then you've got the public consultation that ended last month. Yep. Um, I hope that concerns like those of the two people who are no longer in the review committee are are seriously dealt with and, and addressed directly. I think that that's why I'm writing about it this week. Um, and at Maxim, we're, we're paying close attention to what's going on here because 
there are some serious concerns. There were before the legislation came through, and then the way that it has been implemented, um, it looks like all of the the people who raised concerns to begin with before it was passed, all of those things seem to have been proven justified. Mm. Mm. But hey, whether or not the the government will respond to that, and uh, and we'll see how this this process resolves. I mean, in some ways, it's good that there were checks and balances, but not really any point if those checks and balances, firstly, aren't working, or secondly, are going to be ignored, even if they raise concerns, right? Yeah, yeah. In their own words, they said they were constrained to the point of irrelevance. That's in a letter to, wow. to Shane Reddy. So, I mean, they didn't feel like they were there for any any good purpose. So mm. that, that a minimum needs to be in place. Hey, this is a such an important uh, topic for for all of us, I suppose, in New Zealand. The uh, the article that you wrote that's going to be available on the Maxim website, I understand, and uh, people can Google search the original Herald article that you're responding to in that regard as well. Uh, Marion, thank you so much for the work that you do at Maxim. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima Studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.